Hello and welcome to a very special episode of The Brave Room. Here with us today, we have the man who took not a single straight road to get here, and award-winning game developer, Juan Hazmir. Hey, so right. hey everyone, I'm Hazmir, uh, CEO and game director of Metronomy, also a co-founder. Um, thanks for having me. As always, uh, until the authorities come and change it, in the, ga- in the Brave Room, you have me, Juan Amiral, and Kit from Game Braves. Yeah, it's me. It's a me. Yeah, we c- they they haven't gotten rid of us yet, and that's that's what's important here. So we have, like, as you know, because we both our names start with one, so naturally we're all part of the big WhatsApp group of ones in the world, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, the great minds, right? Yeah, the great minds WhatsApp group. Yeah, yeah, uh, one hive mind. The one hive mind. <laughs> one hive mind. <laughs> nice one, kid. I vaguely remember at some point you told the story. I should point out today. Today, what our topic we're going to be speaking about is we're going to be talking about crunch, because we're and we have a good reason for bringing Mr. Hasmir here to talk to us about crunch. That's because several years ago we met at an event. We were told this story of the legendary one Hasmir carrying a bell at six p.m. that he would ring. To tell people to stop working, so <laughs> close, close. Seven p.m. Seven p.m. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Because we uh, we have a flexi hour. Like um, you can come in at any time from eight to ten, um, and then you can have one hour of lunch. So that means you have uh, nine hours lah in in the office, including that one hour lunch. So if you're if you log in at eight a.m., you are required to leave by five p.m. And then if you log in by ten p.m. Uh, eight ten a.m., then you have to leave by seven. Lah. Yeah. So. Well, I guess that that answers the question of is that true? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, <clears throat> basically, what happened is, uh, yeah, we for most of the time they were not uh, crunching at all, but um, obviously near the near the master, the master deadline, uh, there were so many things that we are very new to, right? Because um, a lot of the team are newcomers to the industry. And obviously, we are not used to some requirements. Uh, on top of that, um, our publisher is in the UK, so there is a so- some sort of time lag sometimes. Uh, not to say that No Straight Roads had zero crunch. There is crunch, uh, uh, but very little. And I try my best to compensate everyone for that. I always tell them, no matter what, that uh, the crunch is necessary for this particular deadline. I tell them two things. Number one, this is definitely my fault uh, because uh, time management, uh, if you do it right, then you don't need to crunch, right? So they're crunching not because they are trying to recover for their mistakes. It is my fault for not managing the time properly, right? That's mm-hmm. number one. Um, and then number two, I always tell them crunch is bad, no matter what, right? Um, you know, sometimes in Japan, you see, you know, some people actually they proudly claim. That they are working in the office on Saturday. Yo, I'm in the office on Saturday. Yo, you know, and then they post it on Facebook and all this. And yeah, it's not something to be proud of, lah. So, I want to tell. Uh, I always tell the people in Metronomic that crunch is always bad. It is. It should not be the norm at all. You will be compensated, but still, this is a bad thing. And also, um, obviously, I only uh, for crunches. Usually, I will tell them uh, that it's optional. Right, so I am I am willing to accept the fact if they're not willing to do it, right? Mm. Uh, like for example, um, sometimes we have a very bad deadline, like on Monday, for example, on Monday morning, mm. right? Because uh, the deadline is like because uh, obviously uh, the publisher and a lot of media have already announced that this game is going to come out on this date, and all this. And then not only that, uh, we have a lot of uh, we have four platforms to handle, right? Uh, and then for especially for for Win for Windows it's easier to to control. We just upload it and that's it. But for uh, PlayStation, for Xbox, and for Switch, uh, all of them, you know, they have their approval process, right? Yeah. And yeah. then and then we have to reverse calculate, right? For example, if you want it to be up on the store by this time, then or because we have physical copies as well. So if you want it to be printed on time, then we need to reverse calculate. The game has to be approved by this time. And then sometimes the game does not get approved because of bugs or whatsoever. So then we have to fix them, lah. Right? Yeah. So because of this, unfortunately, uh, we didn't. Uh, how to say? 
it was a bit hard to forecast uh, those uh, reports. Hence, I we unfortunately had to crunch for that particular part. But yeah, as I said, uh, crunch is always bad, and it shouldn't be a culture that we cultivate. I sh- I should point out, you know, that that was a very good like technical explanation of the process behind making games, like the the whole like you know you need time for cert, you need time for printing, and all that stuff. Yep, yep, yep. And for a lot of people, this would be their first time hearing about this. <laughs> if it wasn't for the cyberpunk thing that happened late last year. <laughs> Where now everyone <laughs> knows what the system of producing a game is. Because... Yeah, well, I, unfortunately, I think a lot of people still don't. <laughs> it's like they're still complaining about it, right? Yeah. Mm. No, because like, uh, because Project Red was uh, kept trying to pass the buck to somewhere else for why <laughs> why the game was the way it was. So that no, no, it was QA. It was they, this should have been solved during yeah, QA yeah. and. Da, da. So yeah, I think yeah, the, the weird thing is that I mean it's not only limited to cyberpunk lah, but you you do hear some of these uh, companies they even crunch their employees way before the master deadline. So that that for me is a bit weird lah. So in other words, maybe they are treating crunch as a norm, right? Yeah, it's like overclocking your PC, you know. Yeah, exactly, exactly, and uh, it's not called overclocking anymore because you always overclock it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> like that so it's like it's like a norm already yeah so um knowing the process i understand that it's very hard to make a game but at the same time as well some of these companies they crunch their employees way before the master deadline so it is slightly suspicious sometimes like yeah but yeah i mean seriously uh, you know you keep hearing crunch in the game industry anyway and some companies do treat it like a norm right yeah uh, before we continue any further, I, I just realized we probably should have defined what crunch is because, like you said, a lot of people, oh, yeah. not everyone, has spent the past three months like reading all about this. Yep, yep, yep. Go so ahead. When, <laughs> so when we're talking about crunch here, we're talking about uh, it's essentially like how how would I put it? Chronic overtime, I guess mm. is, is the best. <laughs> yep, yep. Is the best way to put it. So a lot a lot of companies will make people work long nights, sometimes even work weekends. Like mm. way longer than they should, yep. And a lot of countries that have these studios will often have labor laws that don't really quite account for this, through some loophole or whatever. And that's usually what we're talking about when we're talking about crunch. Mm. Funnily enough, if you play mobile games, you actually would know just a little bit about the process, like how game launches are slightly delayed because they couldn't get approval for the crediting system. Like you can't make the in-game purchases uh, the other day there was also a game that said we need approval from the play store so we cannot launch at this time you yeah. can tell you at a later date or something like that like there was there is a game that was supposed to launch last week but they actually delayed it because of the whole approval process mm-hmm. yeah which, they... which is why i think you know uh, platforms for pc can be very very attractive because you rarely have this kind of approval process for the PC, like for example, even for No Straight Roads, the only approval process is through our publisher, Sold Out, right? Hmm. Uh, which is also necessary for all platforms anyway. But after they say okay, then okay, we can upload the game onto the Epic Game Store, you know. And I believe Steam is also similar, right? They don't have a, they don't have Valve like checking the game and uh, approving everything and then that's it. You know? So, but for PlayStation and Nintendo Switch and Xbox, definitely you have to lah. Yeah, and of course as well, iPhone and all that because they have very stringent, uh, you know, like rating checks, uh, to make sure that the game is, you know, smooth as in you can play from A to till the end at least. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's... I mean, that's why that's why uh, Steam dumpster diving is a thing. Yeah, I was because say, there's like... no there's no particular approval process. Yeah, true lah. I mean, basically the user is the. Approvals are they're the they're the approval panel are basically, <laughs> yeah. which again which again doesn't really work because you know it's a hobby to play terrible Steam games that should not have passed certification. <laughs> hey, it's a nice hobby though. I mean, it's it's a very nice uh, how to say it changed the game industry a lot, right? Like it made things more transparent, I guess, to the yeah. a game. Yeah. So even seeing all these bugs, it makes you it tells you that uh, games are made by human beings, like you know. So there's a sense of humanity in all this, lah. Yeah, we. That's a great topic for another time, but we will because we yep. do we do want to keep this on the on the crunch train. Like, yep. You made an essentially an indie game, right? Like, yep. Yeah. Even though, 
pedantic people, i.e. the person recording this podcast right now, would argue that having a publisher does not make you indie. The truth is, you're either an indie game or a triple A game nowadays. So, you know, uh, well, for one thing, that the line is very thin, and second yeah. thing, that, I mean, there's whether you have a publisher is not or not is not a definition of indie in the first place. There I mean, are so it was, many was, it was for music for a while. Yeah, yeah, but there are so many indie developers indie developers now with publishers. So yeah, yeah. That, that doesn't make sense anymore because we have uh, publishers who specialize in indie games. Right? Yeah. yeah. De- looking at you, Devolver Digital. Call me. Yeah, uh. exactly. Uh, Annapurna, for example, right? Yeah. Uh, another indie as well, who I think did uh, Sim- Simulacra, another Malaysian game, right? So yeah, I think there are publishers who do indie games as well. So doesn't Look make at sense. you supporting the local industry, bringing local publishers onto this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> local co- game companies. Yeah. Yeah. Local yeah, yeah, I don't think we ha- do. We have a local publisher. I wonder. I mean, maybe I- it's time for Metronomic to start publishing games. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's one of the dreams. But yeah, we are still a long way from there. <laughs> Anyways, my my point was another yep. indie game company, Super Giant, uh, hmm. did the big old flex that they had mandatory time off to make sure employees didn't do crunch. Yep. yep. So what well, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I think that is a very, very good target to aim for, lah. You know, um, I think what Super Giant Games did very well is that uh, they did an early access kind of system, right? And so, yeah. um, even though the game has bugs, uh, obviously the first early access version is already very good. So they make sure that the game is really good from the start. Um, and there is there are higher ups that decide on the deadlines, right? So because of that, they look at the situation. If they think that the game cannot make it, then they just say, "Okay, I will have. Uh, we can have another four months uh, more." You know, for example. Oh, I don't know. Obviously, I I don't work in Super Giant Games, um, so I I don't dare to you know say for certain how they work. But obviously, they already have some games in their portfolio, right, under their wing. Um, yeah. That's Transistor and the like. Um, so maybe the finances from those games are already are uh, helping out with this. Uh, uh, with Hades, right? So yeah. that's why they have the flexibility to do a lot of early access and all that. But seriously, there are some developers who do this and still crunch, right? So that is bad. So which is why I really, really applaud um, Super Giant Games for making sure that there's no crunch for Hades, which is a really wonderful game, right? Yeah. Uh, and then after that, I think then only after that, once they confirm that they have a proper game and they took a lot, a lot. A lot of time, right? To yeah, yeah. Up, all that, and then finally, then only they release it for Switch, which I think is a very, very good flow. Right? I think it's Switch, right? Yeah, yeah I think it's, it, yeah. Switch was the official 1.0 release, yeah. Yep, yep. So they they make sure that the game is fully fleshed out first, um, and not only that, if you play the early access, you will know that there's a lot of communication between them and the fans. Uh, whenever they update their game, right? Uh, they usually have this what we call the patch notes, right? Yeah. The update. And then they will always label the ones that were recommended by fans. Oh, right? that's they, really interesting. Yeah, they put an icon there. So a lot of great communication between them and the fans and all that. So because of that, um, you can say that a very good de- when you, you know that a de- developer is successful when they are in control of everything, including the deadline. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So because they have no pressure from anywhere else, um, they are in a very good position to eliminate crunch. Altogether, and like I said before, people with this power, they don't. Some of them don't even intend to eliminate crunch at all. They still think crunch is a norm. So it's very good for super giant games to to know that crunch is bad. Um, yeah. So I and obviously it's not just because it's it's easy to say that it, they do it because they have the flexibility because they have other games and they have finance and all that. But obviously it's a long effort, right? It's like from Bastion onwards, maybe they had this plan from the start, you know, mm-hmm. to, to make sure that they don't co- they control everything, right? So they have all these uh, planned up and then they have they save all the money from Bastion, from Transistor and all that, and then make sure that hey, this is a successful game without crunch, yeah. Yeah, I, this this is the second time you've brought up the role of management in this. I was actually going to save this question for later, but let's, let's talk about it now. So basically, okay. when, when we're making a game, you know, mm. as you know, we gamer braves make a game. There's essentially three parties. Yep. You have the people who are physically making the game. I'm hitting the buttons 
to make you know Mayday appear on screen mm. there are the people whose job is to say okay Mayday has to be able to do a flip by the end of the week mm-hmm. and then there's the people whose job is to go around to investors and say hey we're working on this thing and Mayday is going to do a flip by the end of the week <laughs> okay all right that's a nice way to say it yep so you you have these three people mm. now whose fault is crunch out of out of, <laughs> out of these three essentially the 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 third, the third one for sure third one yeah yeah you're talking about making sure that the that media appears on the screen it is are you talking about the project manager or are you talking because that, i mean that's many ways to do it physically typing that means is a programmer okay yeah, to clarify group a is like the ground level these are the animators slash programmers All right. programmers yeah the development team then the second one is to make sure that the that's management yeah the project the leads manager, right? yeah and then the third one is the investment is the... arm yeah <laughs> The investment arm. Uh, well, I can say that the third one in our company is the director, lah. Mm. Right? Because the director is not only because project management is one thing. The director also does project management, by the way. Oh yeah. yeah. The director also has to um, has to talk to the investors as well, right? To the publishers or whoever. Yeah. So, but whatever it is, is definitely third one. Because the third one, uh, Group C, because the Group C is the one that is controlling the promises. Um, so. It is up to that person to negotiate with the investor, uh, you know, the reality of the situation, right? So uh, if the if you tell the publisher that okay, we can release this game in August, no problem, man, right? And uh, you say that in January, then obviously you're gonna face some problems, all right? When you reach like uh, June, and then let's say for example, if you cannot wiggle your way out of that, then you have to tell Group A and Group B, I'm so sorry, everyone, but we already promised August. Yeah, so Group C is definitely at fault here. Um, obviously, there might be some issues with group group A and group B as well, but group C should take responsibility responsibility for the crunch. Yeah, because uh, ultimately, group group C here is the one who said August. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and that is the person that is controlling all expectations of the investor and controlling the you know like what is the motivations and the well being of group A and group B, right? Yeah. Yeah, so because of that, uh, yeah. Uh, again, like I said, maybe the fault is in Group A. Maybe Group A, uh, three people come ponting lah, you know, <laughs> didn't yeah. turn up at work lah. So that's why the work turn up late lah, you know. And then maybe project manager also didn't do a proper gun chart, or didn't manage the people properly, didn't fit the jigsaw pieces properly. Uh, but at the at the end, the responsibility is in on Group C for sure. Yeah, it's a, it's like a leadership thing essentially. Exactly, exactly. This this kind of things because the leader is the one that also tells the project manager we have this timeline. The project manager can only work within that timeline, right? Yeah. Uh, as agreed between the director and the investor, or the publisher, or whoever you know. So yeah, yeah definitely. The, uh, in my case, definitely, my, I I was at fault for the crunches that we did uh, near the master deadline. So hmm. uh, we have we have a counterpoint here. So I don't know if you remember, like because. 2020 was approximately five years long. <laughs> very, very early on in 2020, there were, we didn't even talk about cyberpunk related when we talked about crunch. We talked about Naughty Dog at the start of 2020, yeah, you know, yeah. five years ago. Uh, and back then, Naughty Dog pinky promise. They they gave us their pinky promise. That there is no mandatory crunch at Naughty Dog, and mm-hmm. if they if they crunch, there is, uh, you know, they will they will pay overtime for it. Yep. But a lot of the employee reports were that, nah, dude, we we were crunched like, all the time. Hmm. Mm. So the que- question here is, is crunch <coughs> okay as long as the check clears? No. <laughs> no. No. No, no. I mean, no. but the money cleared. <laughs> yeah, I understand, but no. I mean, com- compensation is one thing. Money is just one form of happiness, right? There's so many other forms of happiness for a person, and that includes family time, friend time, private time, uh, the moment with your the games that you have in your backlog, in your Steam backlog, for example. All these uh, has to be taken into account as well, not just money. Um, you know, money can only take you so far. You know, but. The, the the well-being of your employees should be the number one priority not the compensation yeah it's it's 
It's like you're saying. It's like you're saying. Um, I I pay money, so it's okay for me to hit other cars. Something like that, you know. I, I I got insurance already, so I can hit other cars. That's that's not how it works, right? <laughs> I I I should just in, interject here. When you say I pay money, so I hit other cars, you just <laughs> accidentally become a leftist icon because that's that's a common a common slogan that if. A uh, punishment for a crime is a fine. Then it's then it's only a criminal for the poor or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Accidental leftist icon one husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not encouraging that statement. Okay, <laughs> I'm saying it the very opposite, which is, <laughs> which is this is that's a bad thing to think about. Yeah, I mean that's a very very bad way yeah. of thinking, right? So yeah, for me, crunch is like that. Crunch is um, it's a penalty that a company has to pay for. That's my opinion. Mm, it's a, it's it, a leadership penalty, yeah. It's a leadership penalty, yeah. So uh, it's it's really a loss for the company, you know. And and I'm not only talking about money here. I'm also talking about the well-being of the employees and your employees' happiness, uh, because seriously, happy people make good games, right? Yeah. Uh, mm, and if you treat crunch like a norm, like I know a few companies who are treated like a norm. Okay, uh, I know a few people. Uh, I know fa- some friends in Japan. They just, you know, uh, I have to work this Saturday. You know, but it's normal. You know, uh, so we o- we can only meet every Sunday, something like that. You know, uh, although the contract only states Monday to Friday, and uh, and th- and my friend will always say it's okay because I get compensated twice the amount on Saturday. So this is the problem, you know. Um, I think crunch becomes a norm. Uh, there, there are two sides to the coin, lah. Number one is uh, it's the fault of the company, of course, the leadership, right? Mm-hmm. But it's also the fault of the employee to think that is normal as well, right? Like for for example, hey, I get to I get paid twice. That means I can buy that PlayStation Five now, something like that, right? Yeah. So when I work overtime, right? Yeah. So some some people uh, misjudge compensation as something that is like a reward rather than a penalty. Yeah, right. yeah. So yeah, there's, there's. I think in Japan is you know, um, it's more than money, lah. Of course, it's also about pride. It's also about you know, work is more important than family. That kind of mindset. Yeah, it's yeah. As well, but yeah, I mean, generally speaking, um, I think crunch, uh, compensation should not be regarded as reward. It's funny you bring up the the pride thing because uh, I was in animation school before before I decided to pursue my one true passion, get uh game reviewing and all, mm-hmm. that, and all that crap uh, and so <laughs> our final year they would teach us about like professional practice essentially you know preparing us for the industry and the lecturers would be like oh man you know get ready to be an anime an industry animator you're gonna get no weekends or you know no no overtime long hours blah, blah. and I'm like shouldn't you as teachers from a fairly prestigious animation school be making sure that your students aren't i don't know ground into dust like this maybe yeah <laughs> I, i i guess teachers are you know they have a very tough job balancing between dreams and reality right yeah, yeah so you know they tell you that you can be anyone that you want but at the end of the day uh well, i'm sorry but there are many many animators better than you so you have to you know you have to step up your game a bit something like that right or you have to find your identity whatever or else you will never become successful animator so yeah i mean uh teachers will always be uh, be dreamers at the first half of your school year and then the second half they will be realist right <laughs> so yeah. i think that's where the realist part comes in you know because in in reality is it is happening but at the same time the teacher should also teach them that it's not a good thing lah yeah <laughs> but, yeah that's i think that's That's the point I take offense at. Is like, you know, you you should be. We should have a class about like standing up to shitty potential employers. Yeah, that's a very very good class. Yeah, we should really have that. Unfortunately, not many people look at that because the people who are sometimes paying these colleges and universities are those. I, uh, you hear you hear a lot about bad if if for Japan especially the anime industry is. Oh. Not exactly the best place to work in. Yeah, it's yeah. so weird. Animation is so well celebrated throughout the world, and yet the industry itself it's really bad. I know Kyoto Animation is special a bit in that sense, right? Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, Kyoto Kyoto Ani was really like the gold standard. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's nice to have Kyoto Ani around to let people know that hey, you can still make really good anime even without crunch. 
and you know they're so confident that they only have like one anime every season last time lah, right yeah. So because of that, you know, uh, they make sure that the anime is of high quality, and then uh, they make sure that no one crunches. So, yeah, I think uh, game industry also should treat this like the standard, the gold standard. You know, uh, so Super Giant Games is really good at setting the standard at the moment. Yeah, yeah it's nothing to hate about Super Giant Games or Hades. <laughs> Seriously, even the even the amount of times you die in Hades, every time you die, you feel happy because you can uh, pet Cerberus again. You know, oh, yeah. so you just I can't pretty much, pretty much bought all Super Giant games at full price because I I su- I want to support them. Mm, yeah, that's a really really good thing. Yeah, Super Giant. Yeah, um, there's someone to look up to lah, like, definitely if, uh, for metronomic as well. Yeah, I here here's an aside about Super Giant is that they make amazing games, and yet I have not played any of them because people will not shut up about recommending I play them. <laughs> So I so I don't. Well, play you them. shut up. You play them. <laughs> so... <laughs> no man, it's a, it's like poker. I can't back down here. I got. <laughs> hey, 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 do yourself a favor, man. I know Hades <laughs> looks good. I really want to play Hades. Hades. I mean, Hades is okay. We're going a bit <laughs> straying away from the crunch thing, but I mean, Hades is a very very good example of how you do game design and level design and how you control uh, emotions of a person and you know there are more things than just technical game design that's also the emotional part and he just pulled that off really well lah. yeah but yeah that's a topic for another day for another day yeah, right whenever whenever we schedule the Hades love episode then we'll we'll bring you back on and we'll we'll pick yes, this back please up do, please do that podcast <laughs> but yeah no so with Crunch so we you know we've covered man- management problem Mm. And money doesn't make up for it. No, yep. no check no has yeah. space for yep. enough zeros to make yep. up for it. But like, yeah, I guess we we kind of skimmed on this a little earlier. But there is the most common thing I hear is a lot of, especially more more Asian companies, mm. will say like, "Oh, this whole workers' right thing is a is a European thing. Like that's not our culture." Our culture is the eighty-hour work week. That's that's. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I... that's bullshit of the highest order. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, I mean, what what do you mean by this? That's European culture and not Asian culture. Seriously, man. I mean, we are all human beings, way. I mean, it's not like you know, it's not like uh, the European culture states that we have to pray to the queen or whatever, right? It's just it's just common sense working working culture, man. Uh, you people. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's a weird thing. Uh, I was I went to go study in the UK before this, and we and they really take their their like work life balance rules seriously. Yep, yep. yep. Lecturers right. will not reply you outside of office hours. Yeah, I think in France also it's illegal to uh, send an email after five pm if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think one of the I think it was France. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no emails after five pm, something like that. Yeah. So I guess that's really? an interesting question. Do you consider like work emails a form of like mini crunch? Um, for for my employees, I totally don't recommend them to do it at all. Uh, but for myself, I have to do it because there are many many people that I deal with uh, outside of the Malaysian time zone. Yeah. So uh, they sometimes come in, uh, you know. So you know, all it, all it takes for me is just grab my mobile phone and then reply lah. So uh, as long as I do it, it's okay lah. <laughs> Crunch only applies to me. No, 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 no. Just kidding. But I mean, yeah, for that, for that scenario, sometimes I have no choice because of the time zone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, mm. if it's what the job needs, it's what the job needs. And like, like you yeah. said, it's because mm. you're you're the head of this operation, so you yeah, can exactly. tell you to do it. Yeah. It's more like you know, the, are you are you doing what you signed up for? Like, it's basically what Crunch is about, right? Let's say, for example, if you sign a contract that states that you you work twenty four hours a day. Then okay lah. Then there's no such thing as crunch anymore, right? <laughs> Because yeah, you sign up. Yeah, it's part of the contract. Yeah, it's part of the contract. So yeah, um, as for me, being the you know, being the co-founder and the CEO, that's what I sign up for. Yeah. I'm just imagining you messaging your your UK-based publisher. Oh, I'm I'm out of the office right now. Hold on. <laughs> you reply them back. It's it's like I don't know one in the morning in the UK, and you you're like yeah, yeah. yeah this looks good. I think we can proceed. <laughs> I mean, uh, obviously they 
because sometimes I deal with not the CEO of uh, sold out, but sometimes I deal with the you know the employees, which is like the marketing manager and whatever. Yeah. So those people will not work after I think 6 p.m. if I'm not mistaken, UK time, right? Yeah. So usually, if it's outside of the UK time working hours, it's usually me and the CEO of sold out. And yeah, some once in a while the marketing team will re, uh, will send an email outside there. I was just because they are actually in another country, yeah. like they are in uh, the US uh, dealing with Pax East uh, game event, for example. Uh, then if that's the case, then hey, Hasme, why is this not why is this not working? Then obviously I have to reply straight away, yeah. right? Even if it's outside my working hours, yeah. No, I think I think that's that's pretty like comprehensive view of like what. You know what stakes are involved because ultimately <laughs> as much as we want to say no i won't pick up my phone after five that's not always the case again it's about what you sign up for lah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, so that's, that's basically it and whether your whether your employer goes against that yeah yeah so there's there's like quite a lot of idealism versus pragmatism at work here yeah, But, yeah. so the big the big burning question from all of this is hmm. And I've written it down in my notes. I will read you verbatim what, okay. what it says in my notes. All right. So I'm crunch ready. equal bad? Question mark. Mm. <laughs> well, um, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Short answer. Yeah, I mean definitely yes. Um, we we went all over the place there just now, so you know we got we gotta like mm. un- underline that point. <laughs> But I want I want to remember that um, you know there are some circumstances out there. Uh, which is very unfortunate some circumstances by the way that crunch is unavoidable right yeah uh, especially when you talk about tech support right or meeting a deadline whatsoever so yeah there are times when you know if you do not crunch then that's the death of a particular project yeah. right but even if it's unavoidable um, just please tell yourself that it is always bad <laughs> no matter what And uh, crunch is bad. Doesn't mean that it's uh, you have to avoid it at all cost, right? Because cost is something that is a very, very how to say it's a very, very important term. It's not only in terms of man hours, but it's also about the project lifeline, right? Yeah. So if you can't make it for the Nintendo approval, for example, right, then your project might be dead because in marketing, uh, if you're late, then you might be buried under other games. You yeah. Know, for example, yeah. So, so I'm not saying that it has to be avoided at all costs, all costs, but it has to be avoided. <laughs> yeah. Well, do do yeah. not go into it. Yeah. But do not I'm... go into it. Try. Yeah. Really, really try your best to not go into it. If you go into it, so be it. But let tell yourself that it's bad. That's why I feel uh, that is the difference between companies who do actual crunch and companies that cultivate. Crunch culture, so yeah. the second one can be bad. The first one is just really bad management, lah. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, I I love the idea that you said that. Oh, you know, your game gets delayed. That could kill your game. I'm just imagining no straight roads missed its deadline, and now it's coming out the same week as Cyberpunk. Well, that's well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we I had a good run, guys. Metronomic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can you imagine? Can you imagine all the work that people have done for three years? Uh, you know, just because of marketing, you fail. You know, so it's. Yeah, obviously, I'm not saying that Mystery Rose is a superb marketing success that everyone knows about Mystery Rose, you know, but it could have been worse, right? Yeah. If we delayed it even further, then if we go into Christmas, then then uh, you know we we will be buried under so many other games, you know. So, um, sold out did their homework in terms of when what is the best time window for the release of Mystery Rose. So yeah, because of that release window, obviously we have deadlines, um, and that's the beauty of Super Giant Games, lah. You know, because a, a game in their genre will never be buried under other giants. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 why they have all the power, and that is really the dream of an indie studio to have all the power in your hands, including the deadlines. I sh- I should ask actually. This is burning in my head ever since you brought up the whole delay thing. How how much can you delay a game by? Like, what is the maximum range of one delay move? <clears throat> uh, no, no, no. There's no such thing as uh, I, uh, there's no such thing as a maximum range because it can go. It, it depends on what you promise the people, uh. right? Uh, versus what you promise the developers or what you promise the investors. 
for example if you if you obviously promise the users then with every delay you will get a rock thrown at you lah maybe right or but you get your yellow background turned into a meme <laughs> <laughs> hey this is for the for the ages man <laughs> when we're old we will talk about the yellow background still <laughs> um but you know like for example uh some users obviously if your if your company is really really liked right like super giant games yeah example, or yeah before this it was what lah um <laughs> cd project right but anyway um if your if your company is well liked then obviously people are going to be sensible yeah. right yeah um and obviously well liked is also something that you have to work very hard for lah which is make good games uh get in touch with the community a lot and all this stuff uh and then you what if you promise your developers and your um or your investors then it totally depends on a lot of things uh like money for example right do you still have the money to go on yes like, yeah that's yeah. We... this is something that i feel that a lot of people don't understand right like the people always tell me tell the developers that hey why not you spend your time spend all the time that you want to make a game make it perfect man right but yeah. people don't know that you have to pay the salaries of the people every month yeah, uh, ali in programming has a wife and kids he needs <laughs> yeah exactly exactly it's like paper speed right it's like you don't want them to die right <laughs> so it's like you know uh, you can't delay the game uh, like for five years that means you have to get ready five years worth of funding for your company right yeah and if it's an indie developer that's even worse because there are not many games under their wing And indie developers sometimes do not have all the power for their finances. Like for example, uh, previously they had a sign up with a publisher for fifty-fifty deal, for example, yeah. right? So not all the money will flow to them, right? Unlike all the triple A companies. So yeah, I mean, there's so many many realities that we have to face uh, when we delay a game. Mm, unfortunately. Unfortunately, yeah. Unfortunately. No, as the the point about goodwill is really interesting because. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm the only person out of the three of us here who's really looking forward to Guilty Gear Strive. Oh, what? Me too, man. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah! Okay, <laughs> sweet. I'm the hell. <laughs> okay. Uh, What should we start forward to Guilty Gear Strive? Oh man, I'm, I'm like the only fighting games man in this in this oh, office right now. Oh seriously, are you? I mean, I'm not very good at fighting games. I mean, oh me neither. I'm terrible. <laughs> But I just want just... to shout Hekai. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. Remember when it was called Guilty Gear 2020? Oh yeah, man. <laughs> oh, thank God they didn't put that name. Yeah, no. <laughs> But when they announced the delay, do you remember how they announced the delay, though? Oh no, I don't remember. Sorry. They said, "We apologize. We're delaying it, but we're adding better netcode." Ah, <laughs> that's smart. And suddenly, every fan was like, "Nope, nope. We are okay with the delay." Like, yeah, April. You sure you don't want a few more months? We can wait a few more months. <laughs> Maybe oh, we yeah. can catch July. Like, <laughs> just get that netcode real good, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I think Arc Systems is another company that's very well liked. Yeah, yeah. Uh, de- depends. They they're starting their good arc again because they were like, hey, rollback netcode isn't so bad. Let's mm, mm, let's mm, put mm, more mm. of that in our games. So now people yeah, are yeah. liking them again. Yep, yep. So I mean, seriously, it's all about um, knowing what your users like, like You know, <laughs> that's very very important. Um, But yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Guilty Gear Strive obviously also is the same concept, right? Which is, uh, well, a- apart from answering to their investors, they don't really have a publisher, right? Their publishers, uh, them. or do they have a publisher in US it's, or something? Uh, I know here it's Bandai Namco. Like, oh what? yeah, you're right. So they still have to answer to people, lah. Yeah. Uh, so again, haha. I don't know what. What Black Magic uh, Daisuke did to to pull that off, but you know, we get a Guilty Gear with good netcode. Um, that's fine by me. <laughs> <laughs> of course, power also uh, power to the developer also depends on the quality of your game as well, right? Yeah. Let's say for example, if Bandai Namco really really thinks that Guilty Gear will sell a lot of money, then the power goes to the developer now, so that the developer can change the deadline wherever they want. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so in you know in life it's always like that, like you know whether you have a very good power balance or not. Yeah, um, the reason why artists and you know animators are on the you know the dark side of the moon, uh, crunching is because they yield the least power. 
mm. right? Let's say for example, even and if they, you have this very very um, elite animator Don Bluth, for example, yeah, right, yeah. working working for an animation company, and the animation company says, okay, you have to crunch. Then Don Bluth says, okay, if I have to cry, quit lah. <laughs> Yeah. Then the power goes to that Don Bluth, right? So I mean, it, so it's the same concept. So it's all about whether you have you yield the power to say no. Yeah. I'm I'm glad you brought up the, the freaking Don Bluth reference. Uh, five points <laughs> to the audience if you if you recognize that name. <laughs> hey man, I enjoy it, man. I think that is pretty much where where we can call it for today. Unless Kit has anything else to bring up that isn't related to Hades. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, no. Okay, so thanks again for coming on the show. Great to man. Thanks for having me. This has been The Brave Room. If you're listening to this, don't forget to, you know, like, rate us, comment, tell us what you want us to do. If this episode gets, let's say, about 2,000 shares, and you comment, put in the brackets, square brackets, serious suggestion, give a topic. If we hit 2K likes, I will have to do one of these serious topics. So this, this is up to you, audience. You, you got to work this out. You get one shot. Make make it a good one. So once again, you know, thank you to Juan Hasmer for coming on the show. No problem. Thank you. Uh, this has been the Brave Room. I have been Juan. And this has been Kit. And see you next time, guys. Take care. <laughs>